Good morning, New Liberty. I don't, I didn't really feel that. I'm not sure if we're completely awake, but good morning, New Liberty. Yes, that sounds like some folks who have entered his gates with thanksgiving in their hearts, who have entered his courts with praise, people who have the victory and remember that they are blessed this morning. You might be Amen. tired, but you're still present. You might be tired, but you're actually alive. Hallelujah. We got a reason to praise the Lord. You know, the saints used to say, I don't know what you come to do. Hallelujah. But I left home to praise them. Hallelujah. I thank God all along the way. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All you got to do is think about the week you had. Hallelujah. Think about the week you had. Hallelujah. Or you could just be grateful for one more day. A new day. Brand new mercies a new chance to get to know God a little bit more, another chance to hear the Lord and see the Lord in a new way. We are blessed this morning. Amen. If you would not mind, uh, you can follow along with this scripture reading for this morning. It comes from Psalm 23, verses 5 and 6. Hallelujah. Very familiar passage. We probably know it by heart, but it says this. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In other words, your enemies can't stop your blessings. Hallelujah. Your enemies cannot stop your blessings. Your haters cannot stop your blessings. You are blessed, period. Hallelujah. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You have anointed and refreshed my head with oil. My cup overflows. Hallelujah. Our cup overflows. Hallelujah. If you are in relationship with the Lord, your cup never has to stay empty. Your cup can overflow. And if you came in on empty, that's all right. You're going to leave filled up. You're going to leave overflowing with enough encouragement for you and your neighbor. Hallelujah. Verse six, surely goodness. Hallelujah. Not maybe, not probably, but surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. Hallelujah. We are not temporarily blessed. You are permanently blessed. You bless from now on. Hallelujah. Into eternity. You may say, well, my situation looks raggedy. Then your situation will line up. You still blessed. Hallelujah. Don't let your circumstances fool you. You're still blessed. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life and I shall dwell forever in the house and in the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. I think that's a good place to praise him. I think that's a good place to praise him. Hallelujah. 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 At this time, Reverend Davis is coming with prayer. Let us pray. Eternal God, our Father in heaven, we come now to say thank you. Thank you for allowing us one more opportunity to get it right. We thank you, oh God, that you woke each of us up this morning. You allowed us to see this beautiful day and we come now to say thank you. The blessings that you've given us has not been because we've been so good or because we've been so kind. For if you had dealt with each of us according to our deeds and our actions, we could have been dead a long time ago sleeping in our grave. But mercy pleaded our case and you allowed us to come to this place one more time. We say thank you. We ask now, oh God, that before we do anything else in here today, that you would forgive each of us for our many transgressions and sins. Wash us in the blood of your son. Make us whole by your word. We ask your blessings now upon the sick, the afflicted, and the bereaved today. We ask your blessings upon our world, oh God. We thank you for keeping us through this pandemic, oh God for we will continue to lift up our eyes to the hills from which come in our help, for our help comes from you. 
We ask your blessings upon these that are under the sound of my voice, oh God. Give them those things in life you know they so badly need. Bless our pastor as he come now to break unto us the bread of life. Let it go down deep in our hearts, oh God, that during the week, oh God, we may be lights to this dark world. And now, Father, we say thank you for what you've already done. We say thank you for what you're doing right now, even in the midst of us. And we say thank you, oh God, for what you will do. Bless us now as we move forward, that in everything we do, your name will get glory, praise, and honor. In the strong name of your son, Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen. The praise team is coming at this time. Following the praise team, then we'll have an announcement by Sister Bernardo. Let the church say amen. 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 Come on, let's just go a hand clap of praise. Good God Almighty. I just want to tell him thank you for what he's done. Yes, yes, yes.
morning, New Liberty family and friends. Today is the day that the Lord has made. I don't know about you guys, but I am so happy that we have been blessed by a brand new day. Yes. And we're able to come together to worship the Lord. And also, I just want to know, want you guys to know that it's been, you know how long it's been since we've been able to come to the church. And I am so happy to be able to look out and to see you guys. So, whether you're here in the sanctuary, listening in the parking lot, joining us virtually via Zoom, on Facebook Live, or on YouTube, may the Lord bless you each day, especially this day. And on behalf of our pastor, Maurice Stimmage Jr., our First Lady, Sister Renita Stimmage, associate ministers, deacons, trustees, officers, and members, we extend a love-filled welcome to all of you. We're so glad that you chose to worship with us this morning. We pray that you experience the presence of the Lord in such a way that your burdens are lifted and your heart is overwhelmed with the desire to seek the Lord even more. The Bible says in Luke 18, verse 1, that men ought to always pray and not faint. Amen. This is why we continuously pray and never stop believing in God. Please continue to pray for our sick and shut-in and bereaved family and friends. Pray for the health and prosperity of our church. Pray for our pastor, first lady, and the church membership. Pray for the leadership on your job and in the government. Pray for our children and the schools. You are also encouraged to reach out to someone you haven't seen or spoken to in a while. Show them some love. Let them know that you're thinking of them. And this is one of the reasons that I mentioned a couple of weeks ago about the church directory. Just pull it out, go through it from A to Z and call them and send them a card, brighten up their day. And God has truly blessed us to be able to celebrate 83 years. Yes. Yes. And our celebration will be next month, September 20th. The deacons and the trustees are in charge. And I'm sure they're planning a wonderful event for this year. So stay tuned. There is an assessment of $100. Please do your best. You may submit your assessment donation to the church online at our website at newliberty.org. Select for online giving tab or mail your gift to the church. The deacons and trustees thank you in advance. Please remember your tithes and offerings you may submit them also online, as well as our church website. Again, newliberty.org, or mail them to the church at 2965 Meldrum. That's Detroit, Michigan, 48207. Your gifts are a blessing from God that have allowed your church home to continue to thrive 83 years. Don't forget, every Wednesday at 7 p.m., we have our Bible Power Hour. Yes. And that's via the Zoom platform. So you can stay home and look forward to studying God's word. If you'd like to be a part of our morning worship and also Bible Power Hour via Zoom, you can send your email address to New Liberty Baptist Church, Detroit, gmail at dot com. Do you realize if the body of Christ, there's all of us, all the church folks, if we got serious and focused on prayer 
we could usher in a very, the very power of God on earth. So on that note, join us every Thursday at 6 a.m. and 6 p.m. for prayer. This is corporate prayer and it is led by our own sister, Melissa Stimmage, who in September, the second Sunday in September will deliver her first message to us, gospel message, so. And also, join us, like I said, 6.30 and, I'm sorry, 6 a.m. and 6 p.m. Join in on time, and that's the number, our dedicated number that we call in on. And please join us today and every Sunday morning following worship service at 11.30 a.m. for the Rosie Weathersby Educational Hour and invite your family and friends. Today's, you can call in at 1-312-626-6799. The meeting ID is 894-3504-9572. I repeat, 894-3504. 9573. The passcode is 286848. 286848. Today's Sunday school lesson is Persevering Faith. It comes from the background of Hebrews chapter 14, verses 19 through 39. The printed text is Hebrews chapter 10 verses 23 through 36. Devotional reading is from Psalms 40, verses, I'm sorry, one through 13. And did you guys know, well, of course you do, that we have live broadcasts on Facebook. And is usually, you can catch us on YouTube also at New Liberty Baptist Detroit the same day. So no matter where you are, you can stay connected to New Liberty. And there's some very important information about the COVID and FEMA assistance programs. And we have that information posted on the back of the bulletin boards out in the lobby. And if you go through the breezeway and you can call the church number and leave your information if you want further information. Our telephone number here is 313-921-0118. If you are facing eviction and need help paying your monthly energy bill, or you want to know which assistance programs are available to you, the Michigan State Housing Development Authority and DTE Energy are hosting a virtual discussion that will be this Wednesday, August the 18th from 5 p.m. until 6 p.m. with representatives on site to share information and answer questions. You can register online at michigan.gov forward slash MSHDE. I'm sorry, DA events, I'll repeat that. You can register online at Michigan. Dot, and that's spelled out Michigan, dot gov forward slash M S H D A events. There are also flyers located on the church's bulletin board. So if you need one, you can grab it heading out. Also, if anyone would like to donate backpacks for the back to school rally supplies, please give the, bring the information, I'm sorry, bring the supplies to the church next Sunday. And the donations will be given out on August 29th. If you have any questions, you can see Sister Renita Stimmage or Dr. Kim Bradford. Remember, when you leave the house, at any time you leave the house or you have somebody coming in your house to provide any services, put your mask on. 
that has saved us so much trouble and heartache and just put your mask on. Also, wash your hands, wash your hands, wash your hands and stay six feet away from folks. Just back up, step up, whatever, just stay away. Like they got serious cooties that you don't want. <laughs> and Sister Carrie, her fruit and vegetable market has been relocated temporarily outside and she has some vittles for you. So check out her white van is parked in the parking lot. And as I conclude my announcements, I leave you with this thought from Sister Olivia Featherstone. God never allows pain without a purpose. Thank you, and I give back to the pulpit. Amen. Thank you, Sister Bernardo. We've heard these announcements, and we're going to govern ourselves according to it. The praise team is coming at this time. Following their selection, the next voice you will hear will be of our pastor. Again, let the church say amen. Amen. I'm longing for Jesus, so I give myself away. Just, just, just turn to your neighbor and say you're looking at a miracle. Uh, don't you think you're a miracle today? <laughs> I give myself away. Life is in your hands. I give myself, give myself away. Oh God, I give myself away so you can use me. I give myself away. is 
give myself, I give myself to you. Oh, my life is not my own. To you, I belong. I give myself, I give myself to you. Sing it with me, my life is not. My life is not my own. To you I belong. I give myself, I give myself to you. Come on, come on, just look up to heaven and tell God that. My life is not my own. To you I belong. I give myself. I give myself to you. I give myself, I give myself away. I give myself away. Want to be used by the Lord today. Yes. Hallelujah. Just meditate on Jesus. Yes. Lift them hands and say, Use me, Lord, Use me. in your service while I'm trying. Let me stand, Lord, I'm willing. I'm willing to go all the way. Lord, if I falter while I'm trying, Lord, please don't be angry, but let me stay. Because I'm willing, I'm willing, I'm willing to go on all the way. Oh Lord, yes I am. Lord, if I falter, wow, I'm trying. Lord, please don't be angry. But let me stand because I'm willing. Are you willing? I'm willing to go. each other no more sickness oh lord i thank you jesus i thank you lord thank you, i'm willing to go all the way jesus oh yes i am I'm willing to go all the way lord. lord use me in your service if you want to be used in the service of jesus just wave your hand right now wave your hand and tell the lord thank you thank you lord thank you for using me in your service jesus nobody Nobody could have kept me like you kept me, Jesus. Thank you. And the church said, Amen. 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 Greetings, 
to both all who have joined us in person, those who have joined us virtually for worship today. To God be the glory. Amen. Blessings upon you all. To the First Ladies, blessings upon you. To my granddaughters, Mariah and Faith, who watch us on YouTube faithfully, blessings upon you. To my family, blessings upon you as well. To my New Liberty family, we pray God's continuous blessings upon you all as we serve the Lord. For all of our Thursday prayer warriors, I would like to add to our prayer list that is steadily growing. My Aunt Gwen and her husband, Joe, my Aunt Kay Beth and her husband, Darwin, and my Aunt Charlene. I would also like to add to the prayer list, my cousin Linda in Pontiac and her back condition, and as she called me this morning, our cousin Damon, who passed away on last evening. We are praying also for his wife, Tiffany, who is carrying the burden of not just losing a husband, but the burden of being a newlywed and losing a husband. They've only been married for two months. So I'm asking the prayer warriors and those that will pray with me Pray for the family and pray for Tiffany Amen. that God will give them the strength they need in this season they find themselves in. Real quick, turn with me to Romans chapter 8, verse 26 to 28. Romans chapter 8. Reverend Tate already excited because I said Romans. <laughs> Amen. Amen. I can tell, I can tell a sincere student of the word. Amen. When you mention the book of Romans, it's all my light. Just turn out the lights because th this is it right here. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. The book of Romans does it for me. I don't yeah. know if it does it for any of you. Amen. But when I get to the book of Romans, yeah, it's shouting time. Yeah. It's shouting time. Right. Or oh, maybe I'm in the wrong church. No, you're not. Amen. Amen. Maybe y'all don't know nothing about shouting. Amen. Everybody at home, go ahead on and shout. How about that? Amen. Amen. Romans chapter 8, verse 26 to 28. Amen. Reading from the New Living Translation. And the Holy Spirit helps us in our weakness. Yeah. For example, we don't know what God wants us to pray for. But the Holy Spirit prays for us yeah. with groanings that cannot be expressed in words. And the Father who knows all hearts knows what the Spirit is saying. And for the Spirit pleads for us believers in harmony with God's own will. And we know that God causes everything to work together for the good of them who love God yeah. and are called according to his purpose yeah. for them. You may be seated in the sanctuary. Amen. 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 Reverend David said, we know. We know. That's shouting material. I want to talk to you from this thought. He does what he does. Yeah. He, does he does what he does. I'm going to say that again. He does, he does. What, he does. what he does. I can literally take my seat now because I've already preached this to myself. Amen. Because I know what he can do. Yeah. I know what he has done. Right. And I can make the statement, he does, he does. What, he does. what he does. Although the statement has the male pronoun, he it is interchangeable with the pronoun she uh -huh. and it. Many have made the statement, he does what he does. Yeah. She does what she does. And Ray Charles made it famous with the saying, it do what it do. It do, what it do. <laughs> the statement in most cases is a way to describe the actions of an individual situation 
or a system. Uh -huh. The actions could be unfavorable. The actions could be hurtful. But in most cases, the statement is used in a positive way to describe the actions of the individual situation or system in discussion. For example, let us use athletes. I know some of you are not into sports, in particular in the basketball, like myself. But in my mind and in my world, there are some key players that I think were great. And they were great because they just did what they did. I don't know if any of you remember Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. He wasn't known for great dribbling. He wasn't known for an excitement uh, basketball game. But he was known and made famous for the sky hook. Yeah. There was no way you could defend the sky hook other than to try and keep him from getting that space on the basketball floor where he can go through the movement and functions and technique of something he perfected. But once he started that move, it was a guaranteed two points. Yeah. And all I can say when I saw him do it, he just do what he do. Yeah. My favorite player is Dr. Julius Irving. Yeah. This individual is credited with perfecting the dunk. He could be seen in game situations dunking on the opponents, opponents of various sizes. One of his most famous dunks was taken off from the free throw line while heading towards the basket. Yeah. Many have duplicated this move but for me to watch Dr. J play, all I could say is he do, he does what he does. Yeah. Does anyone recall, recall the champion Detroit Pistons? Yeah. Also known as the bad boys. Yeah. They were known for their aggressive and physical play. They were not all superstars like Larry Bird or Magic Johnson but their play earned them not one, not two, but three championships. Uh -huh. Hate them or like them, all one could really say is they did what they did. Yeah. Many have entertainers that they admire. Whether you agree with me or not, I believe for the time in which they live, they made great strides in the film industry and were great actresses and actors in their own right. I'm talking about individuals such as Ruby Dee, yeah. Ozzie Davis, yeah. Cicely Tyson, yeah. Sidney Poitier, and Harry Belafonte. To watch these individuals embrace and perfect their craft led me to make the statement for each of them, they do what they do. Yeah. Even here in the New Liberty family, I have observed my New Liberty family and the actions of most. I have listened to individual lead songs for the choir, and all I can say is they do what they do. Amen. Y'all just heard Sister Barbara after the praise team song. The Spirit of God moved on her to lead her to continue in worship, and I praise God for following the Spirit, and she just did what she does. Yeah. I watched the deacons perform the tasks that they perform around here. They do what they do. Yeah. I watch trustees as they manage the affairs of this church. And let me pause to say thank you, God, for a group of individuals that take care of the business of this your church. They do what they do. Yeah. I've watched the New Liberty Ministries in action as they do what they do. I've watched the ministers of the gospel, New Liberty, as they do what they do. I've watched the first lady does the things that she's not even required to do. And the reason that she does it because she does it because she does it. Yeah. All I can say as it relates to God, I'm describing the actions of a holy and righteous God. Yeah. And the easiest way for me to describe God's actions, the easiest way for me to describe his awesomeness, the easiest way for me to describe his glory, his mercy, and his grace is to let you know he does what he does. Yeah. 
Today's scripture text is found in a discourse that discusses present suffering and our future glory. Many of you would agree with me that there is much suffering going on in the world today. Everywhere we look, there is suffering. When we watch the news, they are displaying suffering. When we listen to the radio, they are broadcasting suffering. When we read the news physically or electronically, they are printing suffering. There are those coping with cancer. There are those coping with financial despair. There are those just trying to survive. But with all the suffering that we are witnessing or living, the text wants us to remind us today, we have a future glory. Yeah. Paul says in verses 18 to 21, he says, yet what we suffer now is nothing compared to the glory he will reveal to us later. Yeah. I want you to know you may be going through, but it can't compare to the glory that's going to be revealed to you later. Now, let me stick a pin in that for all of you uh, hermeneutical individuals that may say, well, he's talking about the future. I want you to know because God is who he is, God will allow us to experience some of our future in the present. Let me say it another way. You ain't got to wait to heaven to enjoy heavenly blessing. God will allow you to enjoy some heavenly blessing in the now. Right, right, right. Paul says in verse 19, for all creation is waiting eagerly for the future day when God will reveal who his children really are. Against his will, all creation has subjected to God's curse. But with eager hope, the creation looks forward to the day when it will join God's children in glorious freedom and death and from death and decay. Yeah. Paul stresses the fact that while suffering is present, it is nothing compared to the glory we'll see later. Paul reminds us that we, along with God's creation, is eagerly waiting the future day when God will reveal who his children really are. Let me pause there and let you know that everybody that claimed to be a child of God is not a child of God. Jesus said it himself out of his own mouth that there will be many that come in my name, but they have no part in me. The problem with most is that we do not want to wait for the future glory. We want what we want when we want it. And usually we want it like yesterday. But when we look at our text today, not only will we see that we have a present day glory, but we will be left making the statement, he does what he does. Look at verse 26. Verse 26 says, the first part of verse 26 says, the Holy Spirit helps us in our weakness. The Holy Spirit helps us in our weakness. Yeah. I, I can't hear y'all at home because you're virtual, but I got a few folk here in the sanctuary. I yeah. think I'll say that again. Yeah. Maybe you didn't hear what I just said. Yeah. He helps us yeah. in our weakness. Weakness is not subject to physical inability alone. Uh -huh. We can be weak in spirit. We can be weak in thought. We can be weak emotionally but in our weakness we have help yeah. sometimes we feel all alone dealing with what we are dealing with we feel that no one will understand we feel that we are the only one that can solve our issue we feel that no one needs to know our business but those feelings do not resolve what you are confronted with right. Those feelings do not take care of the problem at hand. But all praises be to God for of our salvation, who has given us the help in the Holy Spirit. Yeah. The Holy Spirit has many ministries. The Spirit draws the unsaved to Jesus. The Spirit convicts both believers and unbelievers. The Spirit regenerates our human spirit. The Spirit draws us closer to the Lord. The Spirit sanctifies us. The Spirit helps us with our prayer life. The Spirit guides us into all truth. 
The Spirit teaches us all things. The Spirit anoints us with his divine power. But praise be to God, the Spirit will be our helper and our comforter in the time of need. Because of the Holy Spirit, when I'm weak, the Spirit gives me strength. When I'm weak, the Spirit encourages me. When I'm weak, the Spirit enlightens me. When I'm weak and feel like I can't go on, he gives me what I need to just keep on keeping on. Anybody ever been in that place where you just wanted to throw in the towel where you have enough and you're like, I'm done. It's history. And all of a sudden you get a burst of energy. All of a sudden your heart is encouraged. It wasn't you. It was the Holy Spirit in you. And all I can say after the move of the Holy Spirit, he does what he does. Look at verse 26 again. It says, we don't know what God wants us to pray for. But the Holy Spirit prays uh, for us with groanings that cannot be expressed in words. When we pray to the Holy God, we cannot just go to a Holy God any old kind of way. In this world that is adequate on how we approach dignitaries and nobility. When you greet someone that's a dignitary or of nobility, you say st uh, statements such as Mr. or Madam President. Yeah. If it was Chief Justice, you would say Mr. or Madam Chief Justice. If it was an Associate Justice, you would say Mr. or Madam Associate Justice. Speaker of the House is addressed as Mr. or Madam Speaker. United Nations Ambassador is addressed as Mr. or Madam Ambassador. For City Council is known as Council Member with their last name. Yeah. The Pope is known as Your Holiness, O Most Holy Father. Cardinals in the Catholic Church are known as Your Eminence or Cardinal with the last name. Yeah. Bishops are known as Your Excellency. Rabbis are known as Rabbi with the last name. If you are a king or queen, you are addressed your majesty, sir or madam, with the last name. If you are other royalty, you are addressed as your royal highness. Well, since I'm in the presence of kings and queens, I think I'm going to address you as your highness and highnesses. Since we are not versed in heavenly protocol, like the Holy Spirit is. The Holy Spirit intercedes on our behalf. Yeah. The Holy Spirit speaks in a way that we do not understand. Right. He speaks on our behalf before a holy God. I'm so glad that there's someone that can speak for me in heaven. Yeah. My mayor can't speak for me. My governor can't speak for me. No, no. My president can't speak for me. My pastor can't speak for me. Yo, deacon can't speak for you. No one can speak for you in heaven like the Holy Spirit can speak on your behalf. And because he speaks on our behalf, it leads me to make the statement. He does what he does. Look at verse 27. Verse 27 says, the father who knows all hearts. The father who knows all hearts. I'm going to say that again and maybe you'll get excited. The Father knows all hearts. Yeah. There's no heart that God don't know what's going on. Yeah. There's no one that's dealing with something that God doesn't know about. I want you to know today your suffering is not going unnoticed. Your pain is not being ignored. Your struggle is not being overlooked. Your fear is not being glossed over, for your father knows all hearts. He knows what is hurting you before it hurts. He knows what is troubling you before trouble comes. Yeah. He knows your concerns before they become a concern. Why? He knows all things. He knows when we are sincere and when we are just putting on. He knows when we are genuine and when we are fake. He knows when we are pressing forward 
and he knows when we've given up. Why? The Father knows everything. He knows when we are speaking truth and when we are lying. He knows when we are helpful and when we are just getting in the way. He knows when we put forth our best effort and he knows when we're perpetrating. Why? Because God knows everything. And because he knows everything, I can say in a loud voice today, he does what he does. Yeah. Finally, look at verse 28. Verse 28 says, and we know. And we know. And we know. In case you don't know, hang out after class so I can teach you what it is you need to know. Yeah. But for those that know Christ, and we know, we know that God causes everything to work together for the good of those who love God and are called according to his purpose for them. All things will work together for our benefit. It may not seem like it, but all things work for our benefit. Yes, that constant pain in your body is unbearable at times, but God is working that pain to your good. Yeah. Yes, you can't seem to get ahead in life, but God is working that thing to your favor. Uh -huh. Yes, it seems like the unsaved is receiving all the blessing, but their blessings are only material, and we are being left out, but God is working it to your favor. Fred Hammond said it in a song entitled Bless. He says, late in the midnight hour. Uh -huh. Anybody ever been in the midnight hour? Yeah. Late in the midnight hour, God's going to turn it around. God is going to turn it around. Yeah. Mama ain't going to turn it around. Daddy ain't going to turn it around. Sister ain't going to turn it around. Brother ain't going to turn it around. But late in the midnight hour, God is going to turn it around. Yeah. And then he says, it's going to work in your faith. And then in case you didn't get the emphasis, he comes back with those words again. He says, late in the midnight hour. Uh -huh. In case you don't know what the midnight hour is, that's when it's dark. That's when it seems like there's not going to be a new day. But late in the midnight hour, God's going to turn it around. And then he puts emphasis on and around. And around, and around, and around. In other words, God ain't going to turn one thing around. He's going to turn multiple things around. And because he's going to turn things around, it leaves me with the statement, he does what he does. What he does. Paul says in Romans chapter 5, therefore being justified by faith. Uh -huh. Let me just tell you, we are justified by our faith because God did what he did. Right. Well, what did he do? He let his only begotten son yeah. be sacrificed on our behalf. And because he did that, I can disclaim today that he does what he does. Yeah. Paul says in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not here inherit the kingdom of God. Be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor adulterers, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor abusers, or themselves with mankind, nor thieves, nor covetous, or drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. But here's the important part right here. But ye are washed. Yeah. But ye are washed. You are washed by the blood of the Lamb. And because we are washed by the blood of the Lamb, we are now sanctified and justified. I think some of y'all holy folk just missed it. We are now sanctified and justified. See, when God does things, he don't just do anything individually. He always has something to accompany it. Mercy don't travel by itself. It travels with grace. Joy don't travel by itself. It travels with happiness. But even here, justification travels with sanctification. So since we've been watched, we are not just justified. But we are sanctified, and all I can say is, it's just 
to what he does. As I go to my seat, I want to leave you with this. Paul says in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 4 to 9, but God, but God, but God, who is rich in mercy, for his great love wherewith he loved us, even when we were dead in sin, have quickened us together with Christ, for by grace we are saved. It ain't because of your good looks. It ain't because you sing so good. It ain't because you preach so good. It ain't because you teach so good. It's only through his grace are we saved. Then Paul says, we have raised up, he has raised us up together and made us to sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus, that in the ages to come, that he might show the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness towards us through Jesus Christ. For by grace are we saved yeah. through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God. Salvation is a gift of God. It is a gift that he didn't have to give, but he gave it anyway. God is a giver. God keeps on giving. He gave you life last week. He gave you life on Monday. He gave you life on Tuesday. He gave you life on Wednesday. He gave you life on Thursday. He gave you life on Friday. He gave you life on yesterday and early and early and early. This morning, he woke you up in your right mind, in health. Why? He does what he does. And because he does what he does, I can experience freedom in him. I can experience joy in him. I can experience peace in him. Why? Because he does exactly what he said he would do. If you don't believe he'll do it, try it, try it, try it, try it. He will, he will, he will do what he said he'd do. God bless you. Heaven smile upon you. He does what he does. Let us pray. Father, I thank you today for the word. I thank you for the people of God. I ask, oh God, that you encourage our hearts today, even in the world in which we live. So much is happening, God, and it's a burden, oh God, but we know that you are a burden bearer. So, Lord, we just ask you encourage us along our way. Remember those that are bereaved today. Remember those who are sick. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. we like to extend an invitation to Christ today that if you would like to get to know this God that we've been talking about for the last few minutes in a very personal way, you can come today. If you are in the sanctuary, you can make your way down to the altar as we will receive you today if you want to come to get to know Jesus in a personal way. If you have joined us virtually, you can come to know Christ by praying the simple prayer with me. If you are virtual, if you will just bow your heads and close your eyes and pray along with me. Say, Father, I am a sinner. I receive you now as my Lord and my Savior. Help me to learn more about who you are. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. If you pray that prayer virtually and you sincerely believe in your heart, you have just connected with the King of kings and Lord of lords. We ask that you will call the church 313-921-0118, 313-921-0118, where someone will be there to receive your call and tell you what you need to do further. If you joined us from somewhere else throughout the country or throughout the world, we ask that you would unite yourself with a church, Bible-believing and teaching church where you can learn more about God and who God is. No one has come in the sanctuary. You may be seated. We thank you again in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. As we leave today, as always, blessings upon you all. We thank you for joining us for worship today. As we leave, we want you to know he does what he does. The praise team is coming. For those that are in sanctuary, we ask that you will remain as we will take care of some things after we have gone off the air. To God be the glory. To God be the glory. To God be the glory.
Amen. Victory. Victory is mine. Yeah. Victory is mine. Victory is mine. Victory today is mine. I told Satan to get thee behind. Victory today is mine. Victory is mine. Victory is mine. Victory is mine. Victory today.